All right, blue red flash. Um, this is a deck that I liked a lot before Historic Anthology 2. Diamante Loco, thanks for the brand new tier one sub. I appreciate that. Welcome to Hoaglandia. I don't think this deck really got better tools with Historic Anthology 2, and it notably has to try and keep up with Field of the Dead now. Now, hopefully, our Flying Threats plus Ember Cleave plus Flame Sweep can give us the tools we need to do that. However, we're going to dive into some matches here and see how it goes in a moment. The big thing I would like to touch on with this is this is an archetype that will definitely be worth revisiting in a post IQR world. There are a number of cycling cards that seem good in here. There's the, the five drop shark that counters an artifact or a creature spell. There's, um, there's, uh, the, the, I think the cycling turtle is likely good as a finisher in here. It's just a two mana cantrip that eventually is a two mana threat. Like I think, I think there's a lot of room to explore new things in this shell with, uh, with that. Yes, yeah, Cathartic Union will be great in the Storm Herald deck we played yesterday, for sure. Yeah, we might get enemy cycling lands, too. Those would be great in the mana base. You could play two to three of those, I think. Is a cycling cancel a reasonable constructed card? I actually think the cycling cancel might be in contention for the best cancel ever printed. Think it think it's think it's up there. I think it's think it's at least on par with like absorb and sabotage. As part of my day job, I review pitches for video games. The amount of developers submitting coronavirus cash-ins is disgusting. That, you know, something capitalism. Cycling cancel is only bad because Tefri exists. Or is it really good because Tefri exists? Like, it's a, it's a cancel that you get to get rid of when they have Tefri in play. Right? Like, that's, it's excellent versus Tefri. Yeah, Tefri, Tefri makes it better. You smell treasure hunt? We'll see. I guess they do they do have they do have treasure hunt sleeves on. It could be wrong to tap out for this and give them a window to curious obsession me here, but I think getting my threat into play is a big deal here. Hey Princess Silver, thanks for the 22 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. see um our decks are doing similar things the fact that we were on the play this game is a huge leg up in this in this particular game not not so much talking about the matchup in general but i wouldn't i wouldn't be surprised if like the person on the play tends to be favored we like upkeep unsummoning my brain more cutthroat sure you got me I think I just Gadwick for one here, huh? Having having the cast triggers and every other blue card I cast the rest of this game will make us very hard to race for them. Just like can't trip this. Go. We're gonna get main deck Mystic Disputed. Sick. Did not. But dispute Dispute is a very reasonable main deck card. That is a phenomenal draw. Our archetype is fairly mana hungry. We play play a lot of lands in our deck for a reason. It's actually, this deck, the Psycho lands actually sound quite stellar in this archetype because this archetype is often looking to... Um, this archetype is often looking to like hit six to seven lands, but then no more. So being able to play lands that cycle in the late game sounds great. I guess we could, we could put 
some monocolored cycle lands in here, couldn't we? Is that something I want to explore? Maybe that's something we should try after this. I think I think that's something I'm into. Let's let's get a couple of let's get a couple of bounce lands in here. The bottom that for now. I would like to a six land. play the dream eater as bait if they if they have a counter spell this is getting counter spelled resolve before they get to untap we'll stomp it want to do this now so that way in case this is disruption or the top card's disruption we get to kill their thing while they're tapped out just be just because your card's an instant does not mean you need to wait to play it on their turn They would not, Lark. If you have two copies of the same card with the same artwork, Arena always plays the one with the with the eye on it, regardless of which one you click on. No, where your where your cards are in in your hand is not tracked in arena like, like it is in Hearthstone. So this gives them another Merfolk trickster back to their hand to play again here, but I think it's I think it's right. Second curious obsession is a bit of a yikes. Close, close race here. Instead of me telling you you're wrong, tell me why you're right. Punishing waterfalls. Why should I have targeted the thing you're suggesting I target? Yeah, chat, I'd rather play more people telling me I should have played defensively with this. I'd rather have more threats they can't block with their flying creature, chat. Or their flying creature up here, too. Yeah, probably this to tap trickster seems fine. <laughs> I'm dumb. All right, wouldn't have won anyways, didn't matter. Could have, could have used this on their turn though, so it like kind of matters.
very low probability chance of being dead here. All right, and then they're dead in the backswing, right? Good stuff. Close tight race. Yeah, thank, thank goodness they're not the one with Cleave, huh? Speaking of, I think this is a matchup where we board Cleave out. Obviously, Mystic Dispute is absurd against the Mono Blue deck. Uh, Flame Sweep is also very good here. Lava Coil is good here. This is an all Doom Blades on deck matchup, I like to refer to it as. We just want as many cards as possible to kill all my opponent's stuff. I know Gadwick ended up being okay there, but I'm pretty sure I boarded out in this matchup. I think that was more the exception than the rule, and I think more often than not, this card's going to be too clunky to be useful here. As, as many removal spells as possible, some Mystic Disputes, and then our Threats. Again, just because your card's an instant doesn't mean you have to cast it on their turn. I'm just going to go ahead and do this now while they're tapped out. I guess the downside to this is they could land Tempest in, but then I just bounce it, right? And I can dispute it next turn. I agree. These are these are definitely my, my favorite set of lands that are available on this platform. Worth noting that Flame Sweep does not hit flying creatures we control. So we can deploy this borrower and not uh, not worry about it. Where do you find those lands? In the store. So we need them to not have, need, these need to not both be one mana interaction. That's probably the game. We'll see. Tempest, Tempest Shin could drag them kicking and screaming back in if we flood out a little bit here. This is, this is protection for Tempest Shin. They didn't bring protection, chat. Always, always use protection. Otherwise, you could end up with Declan. Hey, Declan's great, chat. I ain't got I ain't got nothing against him. He is my my top's favorite four-year-old. So getting aggressive here on my part. I think it's right to just close the game out as quickly as possible. They're down to five. Do you want to try some cycle lands in here? Like two, two or three? Two is probably fine. 
Do I give up the blast zone? I feel like I can give up the blast zone if I'm on cycle lands, huh? This is 8, 16, 17 red. This is 9, 13, 21, 22 blue. Probably cut a mountain. You think I want to give up the temples and just play max cycling lands? I don't know if I want to do that. I feel like if I had the dual colored cycling lands, I would. I don't know that I want to go down colors. Like, like, I have double red and I have triple blue cards in my deck. Thanks for 27 months, Twin. Yeah, I, I think if um, we had blue-red cycle lands, I would, I, would, I would replace these with blue-red cycle lands. But I think with just single-colored ones, it's not quite worthwhile. Bold ham, thank you for the two months. I appreciate you re-upping. Welcome back. I'll be I'll be here for as long as y'all will have me. Toss a prime to your Twitcher, O Valley of Bezos. Do 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 do. Watch someone doing it, they just have lands and treasure. Yeah, they just, they mill themselves out and then they play Thassa's Oracle and win the game. It's generally their goal. Okay, so Field of the Dead means I need to start ending the game. A lot of their key cards tend to cost five, so I think I want to tap out and deploy Bone Crusher this turn. And then we can start holding up Ionize next turn. Psycho Land's already looking great, huh? Like this and this getting to getting to redraw here as opposed to So again, because I expect them to have Cavaliers, you could also, they could also have Yar, they could be playing the Yarok field deck like we played before this. So I think it's really important to hold up Ionize this turn slash Syncopate rather than Gadwick. Yeah, Grade and games like Grade tend to start you off with infinite of their energy mechanics. So that way, that way you can play as much as you want to get started. Drax, thanks for the 13 months. Welcome back. Even once you've been playing a bit, they, they're pretty generous with the amount of energy that you get. Killer Caterpillar, thanks for the two-thirds of a year. Usually, usually when I run out of energy, I take it as a sign that I should probably, probably go do something else. I enjoy your stream, but I have a lot of respect for you. I don't agree with you at all opinions. That's fine. A lot of my opinions are bad. Just ask my wife. I don't, I don't expect people to agree with me on anything. Nobody reasonable does that. I just expect them not to like, you know, vote for bigots. That's my, that's my line. Why syncopate over ionize? Because ionize will be, still be live later. Whereas syncopate will eventually draw dead as they ramp. You're asking a lot there, champ. <laughs> but what if the racism comes with tax breaks, Jeff? Won't you, won't you think of my tax breaks, Jeff? Might, might steal this game with burn spells. 
Gadwick. Gadwick's gonna draw us three cards. We're mostly, mostly locked out on the ground here now. Attack for four. Yeah, we've got um, we've got two more lightning strikes. We've got three more bone crusher giants. We've got two copies of shock. We've got iron eyes. We could potentially just draw enough blue spells next turn to like tap a bunch of their blockers and attack for lethal with both of these. We take those here. We take we take those here. Don't look don't look a gift horse in the mouth, chat. What's wrong with you? Come on now. Come on now. Don't you? She look. Don't you say it's everything. Everything's gonna be alright. Do 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 do. Bow crusher uh, deals two when they target it. So you know. No pride. We take those. Yep. 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 Fantastic work, opponent. Can't wait to do commentary on matches like this over the weekend. <laughs> Are you going to be around Saturday, Maddie? I think I want to do like a dry run of some matches and some folks in Discord said they're going to help. And I need to see if I can finagle you on voice as well in addition to capturing a bunch of Discord windows. What do we think of this? So we got the Flame Sweeps. We got the Aether Gust. I'm trimming most of my reach but I'm being more interactive to do that. So I think that's right. Double tap lands, a little awkward, but I think this is a keep. Yeah, that, that's the whole point, Toxic Flame. The entire the entire reason I am going through the effort to set this up is so we can have have something that has real coverage. So one of one of the requirements for people to be able to play in the tournament is they have to be able to broadcast their matches to my to the Discord server. So that way I can do commentary over the top of them. I think I just let this resolve and play Brainborn. Definitely the Ashiok. The Ash the Ashiok Wub 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 is just my favorite. Just just tops. The, the Ashiok happens more consistently. People usually don't kill themselves with Bone Crusher. People like fetch into Ashiok all the time. I think we're gonna try and finagle Matt there in chat to commentate with me. He does stuff for Nerd Rage Gaming, who's been one of my sponsors in the past. Deal. Let's get a four three into play. What's going on, Mr. Payne? I'm doing I'm doing as well as you can under the current situation. It's doing swell. So we could gust this while it's on the stack, but if we gust it in response to its own trigger, it mills itself. So they get the ramp with this line, but the cavalier goes away. They did they did hit an Uro, which feels a little bit bad, but it is what it is.
Yes, Boldam, you're not you're not wrong. Historic Historic has a lot of good variety in it right now. And in large part, I think that success and that variety is due to the fact that Field of the Dead is legal. Field Field of the Dead does a good job of beating up on decks like the things that are making standard kind of meh, in my opinion. Really surprised they did this instead of escaping arrow here. Yeah, yeah, the fact that Historic constantly has updates more than Standard does also helps for sure. And, and honestly, even some of the things like Embercleave that feel uh, obnoxious and standard, the fact that we just have a bigger range of answers in Historic makes them feel like when you put things like that into a deeper card pool, they're a lot less obnoxious. Okay, I'm just bottoms up here. I'm going to go ahead and play an untapped land this turn so that way I have seven mana up, which allows me to Gust, Bounce, and Borrower all in the same turn, or just Gust plus Castle or Bounce plus Castle. Yeah, I mean, Embercleave's still a good card. Girl, Girl is arguably one of the best decks in this format. I think I personally find playing against Girl a lot less obnoxious than playing against Mono Red, though. While Questing Beast is quite the force to be had with while Questing Beast is quite the force to be had with Embercleave, it's nowhere near um what like Annex is or like what uh what's it called? Um the uh Tor brand. No, I don't I don't keep up with spoilers midstream, Jerry. There's just too much going on already. I don't, I don't really look at a ton of spoilers in general until after the full full thing releases. This game's probably done. We did not manage to get our opponent low enough before they got their engine online. Yeah, someone said Cathartic Review is coming back. Looking forward to playing that in the Storm Serial deck we played yesterday. It's a solid, solid upgrade. Get more things in your bin, see more cards. I think I just like need like Ember Cleave or Flame Sweep here. Yeah, I think we're I think we're pretty dead. Are we? I guess I guess we have a little bit of time. If 13 now nah, we're dead. They're gonna they're gonna escape a row and get to escape it twice. Hey, Corvmex, thanks for the 21 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Just milled someone out with Ashiok and Nicol Bolas making nightmare tokens. Sounds great. Feels, feels Grixis, man.
Yep. Have cutthroat, cutthroat on two here. Probably one of our better, better plays in this matchup. Go fabled passage for a basic on one. Let's us untap sulfur falls on two. Lonely sandbar will be tapped on three, but that's fine. So we can just like opt to make the cutthroat a little bit bigger. Eight to nine red sources? Well, I don't know about eight to nine red sources, but you can find the really greedy one that played six red sources in the Channel Fireball decklist dump. Yeah, it had Conqueror's Death, but it didn't... Um What's the word I'm searching for? It had Conqueror's Death, but it didn't, uh... It didn't have a way to loot it away, right? I'm gonna go ahead and just end step Brazen Borrower here and just try and beat them down ASAP. Bottom that. Yikes. Again, five is really their key turn where they get to Cavalier or Yarok. So I think I just Gadwick for two here. This gives me some tempo to get past those if they resolve. And it gives me some draws to hopefully help me find a way to make it not resolve. We have Opt plus a Lonely Sandbar next turn to get a little bit of card selection in. We also have six power in play, which is reasonable. We'll see if they have a removal spell here or not. Just a Risen Reef. That's pretty good for us. Yeah, yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting to see if they do that, keep doing those after the new set releases, New Genesis. Like having some data that's not just magic online events would be really great. Hey, there's a counter spell. You love to see it. Looks like we're going to be able to appropriately tempo them out of this game. You think they'll ever add Pioneer cards? Yeah, one of their stated goals is to eventually have all of Pioneer on Magic Arena. We are supposed to get Pioneer Masters later this year, which won't be the entirety of Pioneer, but it's supposed to include a large chunk of cards that are played in Pioneer into the format. We're supposed to get supposed to get three additional big card releases past historic anthologies and normal sets this year. We're supposed to get Jumpstart, which will be legal in historic on Arena. We're supposed to get Amonkhet remastered this year, and we're supposed to get Pioneer remastered. So their goal is to turn historic into Pioneer. No, their goal is to have Pioneer on Magic Arena and have historic encompass all of the cards that are legal on Magic Arena. So even once all of Pioneer is on the platform, Historic will still be different, not only because of the ban list, but also because of cards that are legal in Historic that aren't legal in Pioneer. So for example, there's been a number of cards in these Historic anthologies 
that aren't legal in Pioneer. There will be um, there's cards in the historic anthologies that aren't legal in Pioneer. There will be um, uh, I'm blanking. There will be Jumpstart cards that aren't legal in Pioneer. Lots of lots of things like that. So this will, once Pioneer is on Magic Arena, Historic will be to Pioneer as Vintage is to Legacy. There will be a lot of the same card pool, but there's going to be some distinct differences that really make them stand out. And again, one of my core problems with Pioneer isn't even the cards that are legal. It's how their ban list is managed, but like Nexus of Fate, Field of the Dead, Leyline of Abundance. These are all cards that are legal in Historic that also aren't legal in Pioneer, even though they're in Pioneer legal sets, like they're banned there. Yeah, yeah, we also get Brawl editions every month that are legal in Historic. Really, really looking forward to everything they have planned. Oh, I guess this lets them put a land in, which makes another zombie. That's lethal, right? Bye, friends. Well, I'm in Can't Remaster. It'll be both. It'll be it'll be cards from both that are that are likely going to be historic playable. So it won't be everything from Amonkhet and everything from the second set, but it'll be large chunks of it. And I assume in these custom sets where they get to pick and choose which cards they're adding, they'll put a priority on getting all the cards in that are easier to program and leave out the ones that give them issues for later releases, which is nice why the remastered sets are great. They can pick and choose and make their job easier while still giving us content. Great. This is it. This is the bubble match, chat. If we win this one, we get to find the loving embrace of the Diamond 4 rank floor. Do I have a timer for when to stand? No, just like when my legs get tired or my legs start to cramp up a little bit. Blue red wizards, eh? A little bit of a blue red mirror match. Yeah, definitely, Dwight. Hundred, hundred percent. We had played something similar to what the current opponent is playing on stream at some point in the recent recent past. Check out Blue Red Wizards on my YouTube channel and my website. Probably not an exact list, but in the same archetype at least. Mm. I 
think I'm opting here, even though I could use it to get Cutthroat bigger next turn. I think my goal here is uh, to have four mana to go Cutthroat, Cutthroat next turn. That's really good, but it's just not good enough without a land, I don't think. Look at that. Get to have our cake and eat it too, chat. I think I just do this now. And then we can like flash this in to trade with the Pyromancer. Take four down to seven. There's like attempting to use this as a blue doom blade. It's unfortunate. So we're going to five now. If this is a land, we're in a lot of trouble. Even another threat's pretty bad for us. That's, um, using that on my face as opposed to my Bone Crusher Giants, a decision. All right, so we're dead here. Fair. Another matchup where Flame Sweep seems excellent, Lava Quail seems fine. Uh, I don't know if Mystic Dispute's good enough here or not. I feel like it's probably not. Couple of Disputes, couple of Aether Gusts, Flick Submit. Seems good. Right, let's do it. do this now before they can sacrifice it to stop my giant hey i'm glad you're enjoying it you dude it's been it's been a sweet one definitely want to get that one up on the website once i get some time to work on that so three quarters of a year returning dawn welcome back again just because your card's an instant doesn't mean you need to wait to play it on their turn i'm just gonna go ahead and get the bone crusher giant stomp in while they don't have a counter spell available I think I'd rather just play a 4-3 here than kill their thing. This may or may not be wrong if they have, like, Wizard's Lightning. On their turn one. Because I wanted to get my Bone Crusher Giant used, so that way I could have a 4-3 to cast, so I could put them under a clock. Actually killing them is the way we win this game. We don't just want to endlessly kill their threats, because eventually they're going to draw burn spells and end the game. The shock is pretty resource efficient, so saving it to use at a later turn really isn't a big deal.
just gonna leave up all my instant speed stuff instead of playing Bone Crusher Giant here. If they don't give me something to kill, I can always just instep borrower. It's a flash deck. You're meant to play everything on their turn. Yeah, something like that. That's ac it's actually a mistake a lot of newer players make when playing decks like this. So I always like to point out that like, hey, that's usually not right. The fact that they don't have a bunch of mana available here means I'm just going to go ahead and attack them for four and then I'm going to play this other Bone Crusher Giant out and then hopefully on the back of Lightning Strike plus Shock they should be dead next turn. lightning strike them here as opposed to shocking them because I want I, if if they didn't have a counter spell I didn't want them to know I played shock close glist race again okay, I'm happy with how I boarded let's go ahead and run it back Man, the world is strange, chat. People are stupid. I had someone get upset that I suggested we should levy criminal charges against news media people who downplayed COVID, the COVID pandemic and encouraged people to continue going out and say it wasn't a big deal. Imagine, imagine defending that behavior. Twitter. Twitter is a wild place, chat. I'm gonna bot on the brain bore cutthroat here. Just like all Doom Blades on deck. Thanks for the 35 months, Omnizia. I appreciate that. Welcome back. I'm going to go ahead and stop this again while they don't have Spell Pierce up or anything like that. Killing this proactively also cuts them off of making their Wizard's Lightning cheaper if they don't have another Wizard. Your parents are sending you back to your apartment in the dead center of the city. It's been nice being in the countryside and social distancing, but I guess it's over. Reason COVID is over. I I am sorry that your parents don't live in reality. People people like that are the reason why OK Boomer is a thing. Imagine, imagine thinking that it's over just as the incredible number of deaths are really ramping up in our country. Like that, that's just so mind-boggling. Yeah, that, attitudes like that are why, like, there needs, there should be real consequences for people and news media. And yeah, it really hasn't even started yet in most places. Beefcake, thanks for 11 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. <sighs> Bone Crusher is a good drop. Let the let the parade of giants begin, huh? Um, yeah, I'm just going to play this as a draw two. I don't think it's worth shocking to draw an extra card here, but I think drawing two sounds great.
I think I'm gonna Bone Crusher here, and then on their turn, we'll go Cutthroat, Diddle Your Siren, Op, Diddle Your Bone Crusher, and then we'll get set up to attack the following turn. We've not seen an Ember Cleave out of them yet, but it doesn't mean they're not playing it. The fact that they're pointing their burn spells at my creatures is big for you. Yeah, yeah, the, Il the Illinois governor, uh, I didn't vote for him in the primary, the Illinois primary, but I voted for him in the general when he was up, and he's, he's handled this whole thing very... Very stellar. It's been it's been a clutch clutch set. The whole whole set's been good. Like all all three games have been like super narrow margin races here. Gad Gadwick looking like he's gonna put us over the top this game though. His his ability to tap our opponent's things as we cast our blue spells is really keeping us ahead in this race. Unless they have, like, a surprise Storm's Wrath. I think we should be good to go here. Yes, things could have been a lot worse for Kentucky if that election had gone slightly differently. All right, so we just need three of our five creatures to hit them here. We only have two cards. Sick. All right, look at that, chat. The loving, the loving embrace of the Diamond 4 rank floor. For those not familiar with the arena system, when you hit Diamond or Platinum or any rung on the ladder as you're climbing, you can't fall back down below that. So, <laughs> yeah, we'll be here for the next Diamond 4 rank floor. Nice to see you all again. I'll be here, I'll be here all month. <laughs> it's good, it's good to be home. Yes, California seems like they are currently failing. The fact that their governor has not closed beaches and parks and stuff like that. This is this is not something that's been strictly good or bad along partisan lines. There have been Democrats that have responded poorly and there have been Republicans that have responded well. However, all of the states that still don't have shelter-in-place orders at this point are all Republican states. Some of, some of the Republicans are handling this well, but everybody that's handle, handling it exceptionally poorly is is a Republican. Hello, oldest son. You wanna pick a different show? Alright, I'll be I'll be I'll be back in a moment, chat. Who's chat? Chat. Chat's the people on the internet. They have, I believe the guild gate here is likely indicative of Field of the Dead. Usually that means they're Golos gates. Yes, I am a chat. Yep, confirm Field of the Dead. Well, if we can find some lands, we could be in okay shape here. Ember Cleave plus Flying Creature is a good way to close the game out over the top of Field in the most literal sense. B 
Beaches are staying open so people can exercise while respecting distancing rules. Stop it. The one, the one thing I've learned through all of this is that nobody understands what essential or necessary means. People, people think that essential and necessary means that their life should in no way be inconvenienced and everything should be as conveniently as humanly possible. You can, you can exercise appropriately in a studio apartment with the right, with the right knowledge of what you need to be doing to get that exercise done. It's not convenient. It's not wonderful. It's probably not super fun, but this like, you know, you think the doctors and nurses are having fun in the hospitals where they're working with patients? Sorry, sorry if exercising is a little bit inconvenient if you don't have a beach available to you. I mean, even if you don't have a weight set, there are a lot of just body weight exercises you can do. And if you're not familiar with those, look them up on YouTube. You don't, you don't even need a home weight set to exercise properly. That's, that's actually a really good draw. As far as like non-land draws go, that one was definitely towards the top. Hey, awesome, Dr. Jones. You love to see it. Do a push up, right? No, stop it. Bad field of the dead deck. I'm ready to lose from this position. My body, my body is ready. Worth, worth noting that if this, if this was ionize, someone wanted me to cut all of my ionizes for this. And I was like, no, I'm not doing that. If this, if this was ionized, we'd win the game here, right? So I definitely, definitely don't think it's as simple as, you know, you just clean swap. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna lose this game. If this, if this had been ionized, we'd win. So I can end step this, and then if we draw an untapped land, we can cleave them. <sighs> Feels bad, man. Feels bad, man. Ah, I'm all alone. There's no one here. Beside me. Do 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 do. All right, those are shock lands. So if they don't have an untapped land here, I can Thassa's intervention counter the Earl unless they pay two. And we might we might steal this still. They're they're getting a little bit unfortunate. And we might steal it. Yes, Jacob. I can't figure it out. You can't figure it out? All right. Dan's got, Dan's got 60 seconds. Let's go. 60 seconds. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go.
Pick whatever one you want. All right, against Golos with Tefri. I think we want the negates. We definitely want the flame sweeps. Shocks. And lightning strikes come out. Um, uh, I think the split of Dream Eaters and Gadwicks is appropriate. That's why I have them split. If you have an argument for what problem you think you're solving by adding Gadwick to my deck, I'd love to hear it. But I think splitting these is appropriate, and that's why I've done it. I think there are different situations where each of these effects is more ideal than the others. For example, Dream Eater is much better in a matchup, a matchup like this, because it's able to, um, it's able to actually kill them, whereas Gadwick just gets gummed up on the ground in a lot of situations. I think, um, the Surveil 4 is very similar to generating extra cards in a lot of situations. And bouncing a thing is similar tempo to what this does. Again, if you have a card recommendation, if you're new, I'd encourage you to learn how to make good, useful card recommendations. You should, you should do a couple of things to do that. You should tell me what problem my deck has, how you're solving that problem with your recommendation, and ideally what to cut. Well, that worked out better than expected. Um, I think I'm supposed to just hold up Ionize this turn, right? Because next turn's the Golos turn. A part of Grazer, sure. Country meter and for Delver Secrets. I would love to play Delver. I think that would be a sweet card to print in a historic anthology, honestly. Yeah, that, that's fine. They're like infinitely away from re-escaping this. We'll just like end step Brazen Borrower. I don't know about amazing and historic. It'd probably be playable though. They just like don't have a land. That's great for us. To like hit them for seven here and then we ionize them and then we untap and kill them. You think Cloud Whale? Oh, that's the Delve one, right? I think I'm just doing this and like hoping they don't go Land Sweeper. I think they're likely dead here. Yeah, sick. Slick. You gonna go watch something upstairs? Yeah. Okay, well, all the things you can watch upstairs are the same things as down here, but, you know, ask your mom. <laughs> Lou away. Thanks for the brand new Prime Sport. I appreciate that. Welcome. Thanks for keeping me around. I feel... I feel like I'm gonna be done on this one. We won. We won most of our matches. I felt like we had some good, some good showings of how this can keep up with both aggressive decks and the um, aggressive decks and the field of the dead decks in the format. I do, I do think like, and one of the reasons why I'm not gonna play this one more before we go on is because I do think this deck is going to change a good deal with the release of Ikiora. Like, I think there's a well. Maybe it won't change a good deal, but there's a lot to try. It could change a good deal. 
Just like, so far from just the number of spoilers we've seen so far, there's a lot of potential cards that could go in this. The Cycle Turtle, other random things with Flash, the Shark, etc. So this is an archetype that both in Standard and Historic has a lot of potential and exactly how it's going to need to be built is going to take a lot of testing. But I think further testing right now, this about feels pretty reasonable. Feels like a good mix of cheap interaction for aggressive decks while also having good tools to keep up with Field of the Dead as is. So we made a couple of small changes. I liked the couple of cycle lands. So I'm going to update the list on my website to be this 75 after I'm done streaming today. But we're going to be done with this one for now. All right, what are we doing? Up next, we still got plenty of Historic coming up yet still today. We are going to play some uh, Bant lands, some Bant... Uh, Bant, there's one one Field of the Dead in here to search up with Knight of the Reliquary. Got some Nyssa, some Hydroid Crisis, so some Bant mid rangey ramp type stuff. I'm gonna do a quick ad roll while I get my client restarted and get my deck list updated on the uh, on the extension. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Thanks for hanging out today, folks. Don't go anywhere. Why is the picture on the